time. So um, let's begin the, the, the next session. So in this session, we will, we, we will talk about video language pre-training. And uh, yeah, we will uh, mainly focus on, on, on giving a review and, uh, and also help everyone understand the research progress in this field. Okay, so let's begin. So, yeah, so <laughs> everyone know that um, um, in vision, everyone know that we, we usually can train the great model by first pre-train the CNN model on ImageNet. And after that, we can fine tune to many, many small data sets and get awesome results. And similarly for language and also in image language, um, in this two field, also people found that pre-training is very helpful to to um, to improve the model performance. And uh, very and similarly, um, in this field, people are re also interested in exploring um, how to pre-train um, video and language together. And then and then after the pre-training, we hope that the model can simply fine tune to some downstream tasks, such as video question answering, video captioning, and video text retrieval, and hope that we can achieve very good performance. And uh, yeah, so this is a, a, a very high level overview for this uh, video text pre-training. So yeah, so probably the very early, early work in this field is about the video birds. And after that, we also know um, how to 100 media data sets. And after that, there are many, many follow-up works proposed to further improve the video language pre-training. And uh, yeah, so in this, in this slide, we, we, we show some representative method um, um, until CBPR 2021. And there are many, many new methods proposed. And uh, yeah, so, so in, in this session, um, we will uh, we will organize our talk in in this tree. So first, we will uh, mainly introduce some um, fundamentals and some important concepts in video language pre-training. And after that, after introducing introducing the fundamentals, we will start um, um, introduce some advanced topics such as advanced pre-training and also multi-channel videos modeling and also application to video understanding. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is the agenda for, for um, our, set, our session. So first, um, I will give an overview for the video text pre-training, video language pre-training. And after that, um, we will talk about a multi-channel video a method and benchmark. And finally, we will talk about advanced topic in video text pre-training. Okay, so so yeah, let's start it. So yeah, so for for my part, I will I will cover the left left part of the tree. So I will, yeah. So this is the outline of my talk. So first, I will mainly talk about the data and challenge in video language pre-training because we all, everyone know that now. Um, it is really a data-driven approach. We need to train a very large model to, to get good results. So it's very important to have a good understanding for the data. And after that, we will talk about the pioneering works and the common pre-training approach for this video language pre-training. And uh, also we will talk about the advanced recent proposed pre-training approach. And finally, we will talk about some recent um, a uh, recent very exciting methods that is to transfer well pre-trained image text model to video language models. Okay, so yeah, so um, for, for this video language pre-training, usually um, to, to, to get a good data, so research, researchers have, have tried many um, exploration. They found that the most um, easy, convenient method is that we could leverage the subtitles or or the transcript from from the from the website from the internet. For example, everyone uses YouTube, so I think everyone knows that when 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 looking at the videos on the YouTube, 
we can we can enable some function and it will directly pop up many um transcripts and uh, we found that researcher found that this is very helpful to to get the the video language paired data for training our model so this is some this is a um a quick example so given this video and also if we enable the the closed caption function actually we can get a very um um very good um description about this short video clip so um to 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 use to leverage this this kind of data for model training currently many researchers propose to um sparsely sampled some of the video frames and also we can pair these frames together with the transcript together and then we can form this kind of video caption pairs for model training so now after after that let's look at some um evolution of the video language data sets so yeah this is a very great figure from our previous tutorial um, um yeah so this figure shows some um, very important downstream data sets for example there are msvd uh, activity net caption and also the text and this all these data sets include um different um downstream tasks for example video captioning video um question answering video text retrieval and after that some researchers have proposed to collect very large scale data sets for pre-training. That is to pre-train the model on a very large data sets and then fine tune to this, this um, downstream data sets. Yeah, so yeah, so um in in this figure we can see that there for the for the green green part, green circle, it is um the scale for the how to 100 million data sets. This is a very one of the very first data set proposed. Um, they it include many, many um, videos and the transcripts. And, um, and all, most of the pioneering works leverage this how to 100 million data sets for pre training. And more recently, there are many new math, many papers proposed, and they, they proposed um, different data collection approach to, to get better data sets. For example, uh, we know we all know um, the web VID and the Millard. And recently there is a Millard reserve also assembled in this CBPR22. So let's take a closer look into 100, uh, how to 100 million data sets. So this is a very pioneer papers. Um, this data set consists of many uh, probably what more than 100 million of video clips from YouTube videos and uh, as we as we mentioned in previous slide the previous researcher directly leveraged automatically generated transcripts um, and then they they form a lot of uh, video caption pairs for training and uh, one one fun fact is that together if we consider the total duration of these data sets it is actually 130 hours. It's probably 15 years if you consider all this duration together. So you can get a sense that it is a very huge data set. And um, yeah, and in another table, it shows the, um, the category of the videos. So actually it includes many different categories such as food entertaining and the uh, home gardening and others. So also the data set is awesome, but there's still many challenge in this data set. Um, yeah, because one, one important thing is that the transcript is actually automatically generated by some um, tools, online tools. So it is not always perfect. It can have some noise and sometimes it could have some grammatical errors. Um, yeah. And also because, because previously people tried to collect data set from YouTube. So there actually, there are some domain constraints in the data sets. For example, the collect data, collect video, usually it is about um, 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 instruction video telling how to do something or how to fix something or about cooking. 
And um, so after the pre-training, probably it may not be able, able to apply to other domains videos. And also another challenge is about the, the misalignment in, temp, in the temporal dimension, because when, um, so we all know that the, when the transcript, the transcript actually may not directly um, describe the visual content at the same time. For example, when the person is describing how to um, fix this stuff, probably the person will first do the thing and then describe it. So it is, is the temporal, temporal mis misalignment is, is really a an, an challenge. And finally, because there's a, the video is, there are so many, so many videos and how to, how to um, train this with train with this data is very challenging. We need strong continued resource and we also need large number of memory. So yeah, yeah. So this is another another interesting fact that um, there's a comparison between the transcript and caption. So for this cooking video, we can see that um, the person is describing something. She is cooking something, and uh, in the transcript, we can see that it's very um, very casual speech. And um, when the model when the ASR tool generate the transcripts, it is not always perfect. And um, it also lack punctuations. And yeah, however, if we look at the caption, if we look at the caption, it is really very different style. It is, it is really formal and concise. So actually when we want to train our model with this, this kind of transcript is very difficult. So in order, to tackle this problem, recently many many researchers have tried to 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 improve the data collection. So so recently, um, people have tried to um, to find different video source. Um, previously, for how to one hundred million, they only focus on YouTube, and now people are start start looking at other sources such as Shutter Shutterstock and Dreamkind, also Reddit videos, and they found that. This kind of this kind of new data source is very very helpful. It provides some few slides um, in case some some people did, didn't see my didn't see the slides. Um, yeah. So yeah. So um, previously we talked about the the collecting high quality data. So people also try to um, explore how to 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 scale. The data set to a larger and to collect more diverse videos from YouTube. So recently, there there are some interesting paper. For example, YT Temporal series. One is from New Year's 21, and the other one is in CVPR 22. Um, they try to scale the video domains and number of video, and uh, to collect a better data sets. And also, there's another another. Um, CBPR 22 paper, they try to collect high resolution videos. And yeah, so I think this is a very interesting direction. We can use more data for training. Um, yeah, so so on the other hand, the people also try to, to um, explore, can we use less pre-training data for, for, to get better results? So, so yeah, so um, researchers have tried to, to explore the data curation to use a small subset of data for domain specific pre-training. And they found that um, the, this kind of domain per specific pre-training is usually helpful. And yeah, this is, this is yeah, the, the paper I mentioned, this is a recent archive paper. They also, they also try to do the data curation, but the key idea is to transfer the image caption to the video, video caption. And yeah, in this in their in their experiment, they found that they can use less than one million data set to for pre-training, but still get very good results. Okay, so so yeah, so next I will talk about the pre-training, the common pre-training task. So in order to um there are many, many papers. So if we want to um we can take a look in the model architecture. So most of the method can be classified into two categories. The first is 
the dual encoder, and the second is fusion encoder. So for dual encoder, um, they usually use two encoder, one for video and one for language. And uh, they usually perform the contrastive, contrastive pre-training on large scale data sets. And also they found that it is very good for fast image text retrieval. On the other hand, the, 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 the second category is to use fusion encoder. That is to first, we have vision encoder. We also have the language encoder. We also additionally use another fusion encoder. And research, research found that if we have the deep fusion, you, usually you can better model the interaction between the video and language. And also it can have better results on video question answering and video captioning. Um, yeah, this is a very high level over, overview of the video language pre-training method. And yeah, most of the method can be classified into two categories. The upper part is, is to use the fusion encoder and the lower part is use the dual encoder method. And we can see that in this, in this table, um, most of the method use very, um, very similar pre-training objective. For example, MLM, VTM, MVVM, and others. So next I will talk, I will briefly introduce the important concept of the pre-training objective. So the first is about video text contrastive learning. So this is, this is not new. This is actually borrowed from the contrastive learning and uh, very similar to, to the one in the image text pre-training. So the key concept is to, to learn um, the correspondence between the video and the text. So given the text, text encoder and the video encoder, it will directly output the feature vectors. So we can, we can estimate the cosine similarity between the outputs and to, um, to try to make the input sim the video text pairs similar. And after that, there are many follow-up works proposed. The key idea is to collect better positive and negative pairs to improve the contrastive training, contrastive learning. So one of the important paper is about MIO and CE. So the key idea is to use multiple instant learning in this framework. So um, the, the key idea is to collect a set of multiple positive candidate pairs. So in this way, they can, they can better train their model for video text pre-training. So next I will talk about the mask language modeling. So this is also very similar in, in the one we, we this. We, we introduce in the morning. So first, given the input text, we will, we will, we will, randomly, we will randomly mask the input text. And the goal is to reconstruct the mask one by considering the contextual information. In this way, in the, this MLM training, we can enforce the model to, to learn the, the, the interaction between text and video. And similarly, this is a video text matching. So, for this, this kind of training, we want to, um, we will input a video caption pairs to the model, and then we will um, try, we will train the model and ask the model to classify whether the input is a match or non-match. So this is also, it's very helpful for, for the pre-training. And also people have also tried the, because we, we know there's a mask language modeling. So, Intuitively, people have also tried the mask video modeling. So very, it is very similar. So given the input patch, input the video patch, we want to, um, we randomly mask some of the main input patch, and then we want to reconstruct the input. So actually researchers try to formulate this mask video modeling as a video feature regression problem. So given, given when we mask the input token, we want to re regress the features. And similarly, also there, there are some pioneer works. They try to enhance the, not only just for the video feature regression, they also add some con, uh, distractor in, and then they perform the constructed estimation loss to improve the training. However, um, um, so there are many research efforts, but they found that this kind of pre-training is not, um, it does not give significant improvement. They only show little or non-effect in the pre-training. 
So next, I will talk about some advanced pre-training that can improve mask video uh, modeling. So the, this is a recent archive paper. Um, researcher, researcher found that actually we can um, improve the mask video modeling by using the pre-trained DALI model. So that because in previously researchers just try to perform the feature regression, but the feature is actually in high dimension, it is high dimension and it is continuous. And the researcher found that we can, if we use DALI model and we actually can encode the image video patch to the, this kind of discrete, discrete token. And if people found that it is very helpful to improve the training. And also there, there are other interesting modeling approach that is to um, try to, to teach the model to, to learn the temporal information. So for example, give researchers try to, um, Try, try to do this, this kind of frame order modeling. So input the frames, we can first perform random shuffling, and then we, we can ask the model to predict the, um, the, the, the time stamp of each frame. And recently, there, there are some many interesting paper, they try to further improve to enrich the supervision in the video text training. That is to leverage object level supervision. For example, in this, in this slide, we show um, a recent paper in CVPR 22. So they first pre-trained a prompter to, um, to generate a pseudo label for this um, video region. And after that, they, they leverage this, this kind of pseudo labels to perform this um, um, the region entity alignment. And then they found that they can further improve the performance. And also there are many, many research efforts such as object aware video language pre-training for retrieval and experts. They also actually, they also leverage the object level supervision. And finally, I will talk about the recent very exciting direction to leverage image text model. So yeah, so in the core video problems, um, researchers usually found that we need to, um, we, it is very helpful to use image net pre-train weight for, for initialization and then fine tune to other video tasks. So, and very, a very the intuitive question is that, can we also follow this similar trend? Can we leverage the well pre-trained image text model for video text, video language task? So there are many re recent research effort in this direction. One, one important paper is about clipboard. So in this paper, the researcher tried to um, pre-train the model on only um, pre-train the model using MLM and ITM on image text pairs. They only pre-train on COCO and VG captions. And after that, they fine tune to the uh, video downstream task. They found that it is very helpful. So from, from the paper, they found that image tech pre-training can actually give a very good performance boost compared to other video text pre-training. And also because in, in Clipper, they try to, they mainly export a small scale image text pre-training and, and other paper have tried to export large scale image text pre-training. For example, they, they were directly use the open AI clip for, as an initialization. And after that, they come, they perform the post pre-training on how to 100 million. And they found that they can help, it is very helpful for um, retrieval and captioning. And also there are, there are other very interesting findings. For example, tube deter. This is also a CBPR 22 paper. They found that image text pre-training can also help this kind of advanced downstream task to to, to, to help the spatial temporal video grounding. And um, this is also, also very interesting in that they, they first um, perform the frame, per frame video, per frame feature extraction, and then concatenate them together and feed them to the, the video text encoder. And also, um, as we discussed in the morning, there's a paper called Flamingo. Um, this paper is also very interesting in that they, they leverage this kind of perceiver resampler and, and, the, and then apply to the video task. They found that 
it is, it is a very flexible architecture to apply to the video language task. And finally, this is another recent paper. Um, recently, researchers have, have also tried um, directly directly concatenate the, the image features together, and then it can also apply to the video domain. Yeah, so, so this is a summary of my talk. So first, I, I have talked about some um, fundamental and the important concept in video language pre-training. And after that, we talk about the enhanced pre-training data and also about the recent new pre-training approach. And finally, I also we also discuss some, um, some method that transfer the image text pre-trained model to the video task domain. So looking forward, so, so there are many, many interesting direction in this many future direction. So one interesting thing I think is that how to direct, how to effectively leverage to transfer the image text model to video text task is still an open question. We can see there are many recent paper such as from Lingo, Git, however, most of the most of the method they just simply concatenate the frame features together. And I believe there's there are still many open direction to improve it. On the other hand, um, temporal modeling is, has not been well explored. We can see many people have explored different supervision, such as object level supervision and other um, other modeling approach. However, we most of the method didn't um, didn't didn't improve. They only focus on the spatial modeling, but not temporal modeling. And um, yeah, so this is. Thank you. So I will hand over to Lindsay.